Hello and welcome to my first ever video on this channel. I'm a grumpy English sim racer and this is my preview review of the title Cartcraft. Let's go. So let's talk about the handling. That's probably the most important aspect of any simulation really, so we'll talk about that first. Um, there's well represented detail um, when you come off of the throttle for the corners, and the simulation of the cart bogging down if you don't hover with a little bit of throttle left the cart is good. Failure to keep some revs going through a corner leaves the cart quite lethargic out of the corner, and it can feel like an age before you're back up to speed again, just like with the real go-kart. With regard to steering and steering input, it's unfortunately a bit of a double-edged sword. Black Delta have technically got it right. The steering lock is locked to the correct degrees, and go-karts have a really low steering rotation to lock. You do appreciate this as soon as you take the cart out for your first session, and it will take some getting used to, even if you've been go-karting before in real life. The reason it takes some getting used to is unfortunately down to the lack of hardware most people are going to be using for this simulation. I, for example, have a Thrustmaster T300RS. It's by no means the cheapest entry into force feedback wheel tech, but it does have a limitation which is highlighted by the type of vehicle being simulated in this simulation. Its limitation is its maximum level of force feedback. You see, in real life, if the average person goes go-karting for more than about 10 minutes and throws their cart around in anger, they're going to know about it very soon afterwards and for several days to come thereafter in my case go-karting really stresses your forearms out. When playing Cartcraft, the vehicle's reaction to steering input seems accurate, but is far too easy for me to apply steering angles due to the lack of force feedback resistance from my real hardware. This results in me easily overdriving and over-applying steering angles on an already sensitive vehicle. This issue doesn't just affect Cartcraft, it's been an issue in other sims that feature carts such as Project Cars 2 and R Factor 2. As I've said before, you do eventually get used to it, but the fact that it's very easy to overdrive the cart due to the lack of force feedback to fight against it means that the mistakes can easily be made that you wouldn't physically be capable of making due to resistance forces in real life. There's good depth to this simulation already, even though it's in Steam Early Access ahead of its full release. Three laser scan tracks are provided so far, with the aim for there to be five um, by release date. The tracks are very different from each other in terms of layout and track texture, and I guess this was a deliberate choice by the developer to provide a bit of variety. There is currently one simulated engine, with another three to come during the run-up to launch, and ten different chassis will be present. The game modes provide enough replay value to keep people interested, with global and national lap time leaderboards, AI races with eight opponents, and online multiplayer and matchmaking and league support. This latter feature should keep the sim churning over amongst the community for some time, along with the leaderboards. Another aspect yet to make it to early access but penned for release is the ability to build a cart from a bare chassis, swapping in and out the components and the ability to save those setups. This will surely only add to the longevity and adoption of the title amongst the sim racing community. Let's talk a little bit about the graphics. Cartcraft is running in Unreal Engine 4. This engine most notably made a splash with the sim racing community when it was announced Kunos were going to be using it for their upcoming title, Assetto Corsa Competizione. Its current use is very unconvincing in that title, with its blurry view distance, seeming requirement to run in 4K to look anything near as sharp as it should do, or anything like it did in 1080p on Assetto Corsa, is quite disconcerting. However, I am pleased to say none of that is an issue in Parkcraft. It's not shockingly beautiful and no one is going to be dragging their jaws off the floor, but it does look good, very good, and doesn't suffer from the issues a set of course of competition only seems to. There are, I'm pleased to say, many graphical options to play with in the menus to get the right balance between performance and visuals. Running a PC with a stock GTX 1080, 32GB of RAM, and a late 2013 i7-4770K running at stock speeds allows the game to run at max settings for practicing. It was worth me lowering the settings a little bit for the AI races just to make sure I could get a smooth FPS, but I was being very picky. I would suggest that the game could accommodate some lesser cards quite well due to the amount of tweaking available in the options. 
Sound-wise, there are options for everything you'd expect. You can tweak the cart's volume, compare to the competitors, and turn off menu music, etc. The carts sound like you'd expect, and you can easily tell if someone is approaching and from where. The menus look good. They've been designed with consoles in mind, and you can kind of tell that straight off the bat. The game is uh, coming to consoles later this year, the current gen consoles, that is. And it looks like um, they've gone for a one-size-fits-all menus approach, which is fair enough. It could be better, but it's still usable enough, um, and it's not irritating. At the time of recording this, I did notice that one of the menus calls Tracks Maps, but then when you select that menu item, it then is called Tracks on the next sub-menu. I'm not sure it will be addressed uh, before the full release, but it's just a small niggle. So, is this worth the £15 or so asking price at this point in time? Currently, yes, I think it is. It's probably the nearest you're going to get to simulating go-karting at home on a budget. It's worth getting due to the promised competitive online features and the ability to construct a custom cart from scratch. That's probably the most interesting um, feature yet to be implemented, but that sounds really good on paper. Please like and subscribe if you've liked the content of this video. And until next time, this is me signing off.